10 Wednesday. This is not affiliated with the Top 5 Wednesday or the Top 10 Thursday or Tuesday, whatever group. Those groups, I'm not affiliated with this. This is my own thing. I didn't know they existed before I started doing it. But today, as the title says, I'm going to talk about my Top 10 Halloween books, manga, comics, things to read beyond Harry Potter because that's an obvious given. These are not in real order. I'm going to go from least Halloween-y to most Halloween-y. So let's just get started with it. So tying at number one out of ten for Halloween-y spectrum, but still on there, is Artemis Fowl by Ian Colfer. This is a story about a boy genius, Artemis, who finds out that fairies are real and decides to blackmail them. There are trolls, there's fairies, there's leprechauns, there's guns, there's battle, there's lots of Halloween -y things in there and it, nothing is exactly what you expect, especially when I say fairies. Trust me, if you want to read about fairies that aren't scary but incredibly amusing and very well done, you want to start with this one. Also a number one out of ten, or maybe a two out of ten, is I Am Number Four by Pitticus Lore. The reason this makes the spectrum, even though this is a science fiction novel, when force is discovered, there is a battle at the school, and things get a little spooky during that battle. However, this book is very choppy. It's only a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me, whereas Artemis Fowl is like a 4.5 out of 5 stars, if not a 5 star. Be warned of that, but this series, after this book, is incredibly well done, and the final battle is really spooky and well written, and it takes place at night, and it's just... You're facing these monsters called Pykin, and then there's the little dogs that eat beings, and yeah, it gets pretty spooky. And the fact that the Mogadorian scouts, if they look into their eyes, they can paralyze you with fear and pain. Yeah, it's kind of good. Coming out of maybe a 4 out of 10 is Glass by L.A. Knights. Y'all should know, this has witches, this has fairies, this has blood drinking, flesh eating monsters with hearts. And it's really, really well done. LA Knights and I worked our butts up on this, but it's actually really, really well done. The storyline is that Alyssa Card arrives at school and receives a text about saving the knave and she runs into this girl and before she can apologize, the girl turns around and bitch slaps her across the face and then goes back to what she was doing and Alyssa's like, ooh, you are so dead. She gets into a fist fight. That's her first day at Pillar Preparatory Academy. Turns out that this is the middle of a witch war. There are two witch queens, Lily, the white queen, who she punched, and Geneva, the red queen, who she punches right after that. And she is informed that you have to pick red or white, Geneva or Lily. And Alyssa says, I pick or. And it's about lots of cool things. It is pretty Halloween-y. Seriously, go out and get it. It's really big, but that's because it's only $10. If it were this size, it would be $20. It'd be over $20. So this is half the price, y'all. Brand new. Or you can get the e-reader edition for only $4. Now we're getting into the really Halloween-y stuff. Going into graphic novels and manga is Bleach by Tite Kubo. Ichigo is a boy who can see ghosts and has been as far as he can remember. And then he meets one ghost that walks into his room and is shocked that he can see her and it turns out she is a Shinigami or Soul Reaper. Shinigami translates to Death God but they went with Soul Reaper and she is hunting a human spirit eating beast called a Hollow and in the midst of the fight Ichigo ends up with her powers and he has to become a Soul Reaper as well. This is really good, but just to let you know, this series is ongoing. We are in the 600s of chapters. That's like 200 volumes or more. It is ongoing. It is huge. We are in the final arc, but I seriously recommend this for October. It's really good. Then we have the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lanny Taylor. This is book three because I haven't read it, but I've read the other two and I don't own any of them. This series is a dark fantasy. It is angels versus demons, chimera versus whatever Akiva's people are called. And Duh, Smoke and Bone is about a girl who's lived with these chimera and then she meets Akiva and 
they know each other, and she doesn't know how they know each other, because in her entire life she's never met him, but she knows him, and there's a big secret of that. And it is quite good. I don't like Days of Blood and Starlight. I will link my reviews of both those books down below. Days of Blood and Starlight, not my favorite, but I am going to read this eventually. Also a dark fantasy, but going more adult, we have The Black Jewels by Ann Bishop. This is book one, Daughter of the Blood. I am rereading this series this month. It is like my number one goal is to reread this series to their entirety. This is my favorite series of all time. Anne Bishop is one of my favorite authors. This is just amazingly done, but this is adult. There is nudity, rape, sex, mutilation, incest, cannibalism, sex slavery. There's lots of dark things in this series. I do skip over quite a few scenes, but it is really, really well written. This is the best written series I've ever read in my life. Nothing comes close except for The Lord of the Rings for a different reason. They are both like at the top. This is perfect for Halloween. The storyline is that Damon and Lucivar are there when Tursa, a black widow who can see into the future, gives a prophecy that witch, Queen of the Darkness, is coming and she's going to destroy the deep corruption that is in the blood. A lot of the dark things in this book is showing just how bad the blood are corrupted. And the rest of the series is how they fix it and then what happens afterwards. It is really good. There are nine books in the series. I would just pick up the first three, although I do recommend you read Daughter of the Blood, Heir to the Shadows, then The Invisible Ring before you read Queen of the Darkness, the final book of the trilogy. And then there's lots and lots of books after that. But that's the reading order for the first four that I recommend. But if you just want to pick this one up and see if it's to your fancy, I would do this one. Again, there's a lot, a lot of dark things in here. That I am reading this week for hashtag a year is Laurel K. Hamilton's Anita Blake series. I have only read the first three. I'm going to be reading the first seven books of the Anita Blake series because in book eight, Anita cheats on her boyfriend. She starts sleeping around with everyone. Sex really takes the forefront and the storylines that were really good fall to the wayside in some books. And sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not. I would only read the first seven. That's what I've been told. I've only read the first three. This is definitely Halloween-y. We've been dealing with vampires, werewolves, shapeshifters, zombies, necromancy, all sorts of witches, all sorts of crazy things. And Anita Blake is a police officer that deals with those types of things in this universe. It's really, really well done. I, also, this is adult. This can get quite scary. This can get quite dark. A lot of people on this website can handle that, but this isn't anywhere as dark as this series. I skip a lot of things in this. I didn't have to skip anything in the first three. But the zombies are gross and really scary. We're talking about two books that I don't actually own and I don't have them on me but I have read them. It is Batman Night of the Owls by Scott Snyder and various others. It changes per volume. The first three volumes of the new 52 are amazing! Perfect for Halloween. I read them in like February. I loved them! It wasn't February. It was like June. And they're so good. Night of the Owls is the best book I've read so far this year. Tying with Revenge of Seven. What I recommend that you read, Batman Volume 1, The Court of Owls, then Batman, Night of the Owls, then Batman, City of Owls. It is so well done. I love it. I recommend it. And then I also have Nara, Rise of the Yokai Clan by Hiroshi Shiibashi or Shibashi. Nara, Rise of the Yokai Clan follows the story of Nara Rikuo or Rikuo Nara for the American version. Rikuo is one fourth yokai or demon and his grandfather is Lord Pandemonium, Lord over all yokai of Japan, and he is his heir and he doesn't want to be it. This manga series has about 24 volumes. I will link down below where you can read it for free. I recommend that you get it from the library, purchase it if possible, but I don't own any of it and I really wish I did. It is so well done. It is my third favorite manga series ever. I love the pacing of it. There are parts that made me a little squeaky, like when a one a man turns into a hundred or thousand different yokai so each part of him separates and becomes a living being it's really gross really nasty in that part he was oh like his intestines that's that's a yokai his intestines is a yokai and then the last thing i also don't own is vampire hunter d by hideyuki kikuchi or kikchi and 
with illustrations by Yoshitaka Amano. Vampire Hunter D is an adult series from Japan. The novels are translated to English, and I think they're all out. They are quite good, but there are adult things. There's nudity. Volume 2 starts with a mass orgy. That's when I got squeaked out. But we are dealing with a vampire hunter who is hired to take out vampires, and there's a big secret about who D is. And he has a parasitic a parasite demon thing living in his hand that talks, which is amusing. There are movies, they're both rated R. I don't like my first movie. Vampire Entity Bloodlust is quite good, and the first novel is the first movie, but done better. And I did enjoy it quite a lot. I owned it for a while, but then I sold it because Volume 2 really grossed me out. There was nudity, and there are pictures, and in the picture, the girl is nude. I don't think you see anything, but she's nude. I just didn't want to own it myself. I will eventually finish reading this series, maybe. I want to. It's quite good. It is well written. Hidayuki Kikuchi or Kikuchi is really, really a good author, and the ideas are ingenious. Just watch Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust and you will know. But the reason it's R is because there's a demon, you can see his dwanger, and you can see some boobs. Those are my top 10 Halloween reads. If you're getting a little tired of the re regular Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter type reads and want to go and spread your wings out to more Halloween-y type things. I love all these series. They are all well written. Quite a lot of them I have read to completion, like Bleach, Nura, Black Jewels, I'm Number Four, Night of Owls, Artemis Fowl at Glass, and I've read the first volume of Vampire Hunter D, which is the one I recommend. So I've read a lot of them. Good luck with your reading. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see more. I'll see you on Friday with a book review. Bye! We need spec- oh, I can talk. Story about a boy. That always falls out when I'm talking about it. There's Butler versus a troll, which is hilarious. I said a troll already, I'll just, whatever. There is a point in the- I did not go over this, I'm just started to film and I don't know why. That's the lip Geneva. Yeah. Or you can get the e-reader for like four bucks. Not the e-reader. The e-reader edition for four bucks. Let's say that again. Or you can get the e-reader for four dollars. I said it wrong again! Or you can get the e-reader edition for only four dollars. There we go. Series by Lanny Taylor. Let's do that again. Then we have the Daughter of the Blood series by Lanny Taylor. This is book three, so pretend it's Daughter of the Blood. I'm saying Daughter of the Blood, aren't I? That is not right. What are they called? We have the Black Jewels by Anne Bishop. I almost said I need a blade. That's not right. But this isn't. There you go, my bookmark. I recommend that you read Batman, The Court of Owl. Yeah, yeah, yeah.